to uh, answer your question, I don't think the TSA is going to do a darn thing now. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it just keeps on coming. I had hopes for the new administrator, and uh, all of a sudden we hear he's now trying to create a counterterrorism agency here. Uh, I don't know if a few folks know the difference between, I didn't, I had to look it up, between counterterrorism and anti-terrorism. Counterterrorism is kind of, you know, dropping in by parachute and slitting throats, you know, I mean, that, that's, that's a frightening thought. Uh, so it, it's just, it's more the same. It, it sounds cool, you know, he like, likes this language. I think we have to go to Congress. I mean, to address the fellow in the back, this is where it stands. And, and we, we, as a country, and as passengers um, um, on the airlines, have just grown far too acquiescent. I mean, we've got to do something about this. Oh, can I, I mean, between Rob and I and Rocco, we've spent um, six man years on this project. Can we count on you folks to spend an hour or two bugging the living hell out of your congressman? Can I, can I get a show of hands of people that are going to actually call their congressman on uh, tomorrow morning? Let's start with tomorrow morning. Well, that's about a third of you. What are the rest of you going to do? You've all got congressmen. Do you guys enjoy getting felt out of the airport? You don't, no, don't answer that question. <laughs> Seriously, I'm, I'm, I'm really not kidding. That's the only way we can accomplish anything here. Uh, next question. I would just like to say that, I don't know if this is on or not, but I'd like to say that having come back from the, from the trip from L.A. just about three weeks ago, um, the level of intimidation of passengers coming through the line and trying to get everything taken care of, taking their shoes off, getting their bags in, doing everything else, I was eventually stopped and told that I needed to be patted down because I was wearing a skirt. Whoa. And there was a nun in front of me who was also wearing a skirt. And both of us were patted down. And afterwards, she joked that we ought to be able to wear men's clothing. Um, and this was after we had walked through whatever electronic stuff was there. So I think the level of... Um, I was interested in seeing that these are not policemen who are, there's no official person there who has a right to say to me that I'm supposed to be patted down as opposed to somebody else. So that um, I think public information coming here but also coming from the press and coming from every place else, what your rights are as an American citizen. Right, well you have no rights now. No. I, I mean, that, that, that should be Le legally, the First, the Fourth, and the Fifth Amendment have gone by the boards. And the problem is that you've got local and state police who are doing the enforcing. They don't understand administrative law, which is what the federal government is serving up. The administrative law is hideously at odds with, the cons with constitutional law, but it hasn't been challenged. A lot of this harks back just for your general interest, and um, you guys cut me off if you think this is too arcane or boring, but it goes back to the days of D.B. Cooper. And everybody remember D.B. Cooper? Mm -hmm. And um, for those of you who don't, he, he, he bailed out of a Northwest, I think it was. I don't know why Northwest keeps coming up again. again but <laughs> he, he bailed out of the back of the so-called stair door over um, Washington at night with thousands of, of Northwest's hard-earned dollars, um, having threatened to blow the plane up with a bomb. And um, the Nixon administration had none of this glorious technology, body scanners and everything else that we all know and love today. And they hauled in these enormous uh, magnetometers as they became, but they were essentially designed for the lumber industry because the tree hoggers were pounding spikes in the redwood trees up there. And they, they were passing them through to uh, spare the sawmills. And that was all they had available. The Ninth Circuit Court was the venue for a dispute back then about the constitutionality of uh, search and seizure without a warrant. And the bottom line was a finding that said, well, given the, the stakes and the threat here, it's okay as long as everybody's treated exactly the same. And also, and this is the second point, as long as you have an opt-out Meaning you get there and you get the cold sweats and you say, I don't think I'll be going on an airplane. 
have a nice day. You can turn around and go back. Now, both of those have effectively been violated by TSA. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Well, if I could, uh, before we go to the next question, one of the things that was revealed in this movie is that the TSA agents have no law enforcement authorities. Yes, yeah, that's true, but don't think they aren't working on it. I mean, this, this agency is, is actively working on it, and, and the new administrator, John Pistol, is working on it. Oh, the calling card? Yeah. yeah. At the end of the film, the uh, credits about saying that the TSA declined the interview, is that implying that they're sort of a cover-up, corrupt organization, that they're not really serving the public fully of what they're intended to do? No, the chicken. Um, they're cowards. Yeah, they, they, they're obsessed with their image above everything else. And when you present them with a challenge to justify uh, their actions, essentially, they don't want to deal with you. They'll, they'll just avoid it at all costs. I mean, they've, they've essentially been either silent to the presence of the film, or what the, the charges they've leveled, leveled against us is that, oh, this is all old news. This is all stuff that's been you know, talked about in the past. To which our response is, well, why are we still talking about it today in 2010? Because nothing is, has changed. So if it's old news, it's only almost 10 years later. Can you at least get it fixed? I'm sure it must happen with other organizations too in the government. You know, they just don't want you to know about that they're going on for donut breaks. <laughs> well, actually, uh, there was one incident. Um, we had a screening in Washington on the 30th of June and on the 1st of July. Uh, TSA banned all controversial websites to their employees. The big flap. CBS found out about it, um, and then within a week of various uh, prevarication, uh, they decided that you know that, that this was an IT concern. It had to do with bugs or something. And then all of a sudden, lo and behold, now they're, now they're allowed to um, check stuff out again. I think the Drudge Report was one of them. <laughs> but, but one happy uh, inside note is um, Bogdan, uh, the gentleman in the film, uh, who was, uh, you know, is left uh, at, the, at the desk answering the phone, he still works for the TSA. And uh, he occasionally will check in with us and let us know how things are going from the point of view of, uh, you know, any screenings we might have down in D.C., etc. And he, he let us know that uh, apparently within certain management circles, uh, please remove your shoes is not required viewing, so a little progress in that department. Um, this is more about your distribution. Have you had any contact with the Fromers, Arthur Fromer and Pauline Fromer? They run a very active travel website, and Arthur Fromer is a man of principle and integrity, and he's, he's, he's very much concerned with larger issues. Guide. The Fromer's Guide? Yeah, um, and he's online, and uh, I definitely plan to write. I'm pretty active on their boards. I'm definitely going to be writing about this on the boards. Okay, well, but that, please, that's... if you could get them to review your film and urge people to watch it, especially if it's going to be available via Netflix. That's great. Thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, let's trade cards after the, afterwards. We, we've, we've approached, uh, I think we have a screening um, courtesy of Flyer Talk which you're probably familiar with. So we've been thinking about these kinds of things, yeah.